Williams. Good evening. There has been swift and worldwide reaction to the story we brought you last night. The reporting of our Pentagon correspondent Jim Miklaszewski quoting intelligence sources indicating the Syrian military has loaded the first stages, the so-called precursor chemicals, of chemical weapons that could be deployed as aerial bombs. And the fear is President Assad of Syria, facing long odds of staying in power or even staying alive, could use such chemical weapons against his own people. From the U.S. Defense Secretary on down, the world reacted to the news today. We begin tonight with our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, in our D.C. newsroom. Andrea, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Some dim diplomats even warned today that the chemical threat is imminent from a Syrian regime that appears to be losing control. With the war turning against the Syrian regime, fears rose of a nightmare scenario that once cornered a desperate Bashar al-Assad might use his chemical weapons against his own people or his neighbors. The whole world is watching. The whole world is watching very closely. And the president of the United States has made very clear that there will be consequences. U.S. intelligence, as first reported by NBC News, indicates Syria's military has loaded the precursor chemicals for deadly sarin gas into aerial bombs. Even a tiny drop of sarin can cause seizures, attacking the nervous system, killing within seconds or minutes. Most of Syria's sophisticated weapons, including the planes that would drop the chemicals, are from Russia, Syria's most powerful ally. But today, Russia became so alarmed about the chemical threat, Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, met with Hillary Clinton to talk about a possible future for Syria without Assad. We have been trying hard to work with uh, Russia to stop the bloodshed in Syria and start a political transition uh, toward a post-Assad uh, Syrian future. But the Russians insisted no pictures could be taken showing them discussing Assad. U.S. critics want the administration to consider military options. We do know, absolutely, that these weapons have been readied for use by Bashar Assad's aircraft. Again, I urge, we urge the President of the United States to make whatever military pres preparations are necessary. Another military imperative, securing the weapons if Assad loses control. It is absolutely important that terrorist groups not um, obtain possession of those weapons and then try to use them against any other country or any other group within Syria. There are military options, but privately, U.S. officials concede a preemptive strike against Assad's chemical weapons would be high risk and could even spread the deadly sarin gas. If Assad were to launch a chemical attack, a more likely option would be to retaliate against him and his commanders, according to officials. Brian? Andrea Mitchell starting us off in our D.C. newsroom tonight. Andrea, thanks. And here we go again in Egypt, where the new president, who replaced the old president, Mubarak, after he was deposed, Today tried to tamp down the violent protests of the past few days by going on national TV there, but it apparently didn't work. Demonstrators set fire to the headquarters of his Muslim Brotherhood supporters, angry at what they call his power grab. This week's fighting outside the presidential palace in Cairo left six dead, over 700 injuries. In a live address to the nation tonight, President Morsi only slightly softened his position, claiming his powers are temporary.